we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 44 of Urgency of Change. This week's podcast is Krishnamurti in conversation with Pupil Jaka entitled Can We Live Without the Burden of a Thousand Yesterdays? Next week features an interview by Fred Hall on education. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. For more information about our activities and programs, such as the volunteer program at Brockwood Park in the UK, we are online at kfoundation.org. You can also find our daily quotes and videos on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Pupujaka was a trustee of the Krishnamurti Foundation India and for decades was a friend of Krishnamurti's. She helped publish many of his books in India along with writing a biography which was published soon after his death. Her other books include The Earth Mother, The Buddha and God is Not a Full Stop. This second conversation from 1982 was recorded at Brockwood Park. They ask, Is it possible to keep the mind very young and yet ancient? What is consciousness? Is it possible to completely end the whole content of my consciousness, of human consciousness, which has grown through millennia? Can the brain ever be free from its own bondage? Is it possible to look at life as a whole, without fragmentation? Sir, I was wondering whether one could discuss the wonder and nature of birth in the human mind. Not birth as having a baby, but a mind that is jaded old, (coughs) incapable of perception. Can it renew itself or be totally have a new perception. I think that is a problem with many of us. As one grows older, (coughs) one finds that the quickness of the mind, the the capacity to perceive and take it deeply, perhaps dims. Are you asking how to, is it possible to keep the mind very young? Yes. And yet ancient. Yes. You use the word ancient. I would also like to go into the an- nature of what is meant by the, an- by the word ancient. If we could go into the nature of that first, because you've used it, and I've heard you use it several, few, several times. Obviously, it is not that ancient quality is unrelated 
to time as yesterday. Yes. Well, so let's go into it. What is the nature of this ancient? But all, after all, <coughs> human brain, as far as one understands, and if you have listened to some of the on television, the, the scientists talking about br- the brain, quality of the brain, and the brain works and so on. It has its own protective nature, protective chemical reaction when there is a shock and when there is a pain and so on. We are, after all, or our, my, our brains are very, very ancient, very, very old. It has evolved from the ape, the human, the, the ape standing up and so on till now. It has evolved through time, through tremendous experiences, acquired a great deal of knowledge, both the outward knowledge as well as inward knowledge. And so it is really very, very, very ancient. And it is not, as far as I can understand, as far as I can see, it's not a personal brain. It's not my brain and your brain. Can't be. But obviously, your brain and my brain have a different quality of the ancient in them. No, we, let's, don't, let's you see, you, 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 by moment. making a statement. I'm not, I'm, no, by, I'm, just by, be, I'm just exploring the beginning, laying the few lay, bricks. Up. If that is granted, that we are very old, very ancient. Yes. In that sense. Yes. And that our brains are not individualistic brains. We may have reduced it. We may think it is individual, it's personal, it's my brain. But it can't have evolved through time as my brain. It's no, evolved. obviously. I mean, the so that's thing. obvious that it's. But no, it, it may be obvious, but most of us think it is personal brain. It's my brain. Therefore, from that is born the whole individualistic concept. Leave that for the moment. Now, are we saying such an ancient mind, brain or mind? We'll for the moment leave the mind alone. Let's look at the brain. Such an ancient brain, which has been so conditioned, and has lost, or it may be very, very deeply embedded in the unconscious, in the deep down, that which is becoming very, very coarse, superficial, artificial and vulgar. You follow what I mean? But an ancient mind, as you just now said, is the result of evolution in time. In time, of course. Evolution means time. In time. Now the search which has gone on for centuries, since the beginning of time, man must have asked, has to be, has been, whether it is possible to free this of that, because with time also is inbuilt with this aging, of aging the aging quality. quality. Yeah, of course, is built in with the sense of the ancient. Yes, yes. I understand that question. So. Are you talking of an, when you say it is necessary to have an ancient mind, are you talking of a brain which has also inbuilt in it? The quality of its own deterioration. Of its own deterioration. Of course. Why is that necessary? It is so. No, it is so because... 
experience knowledge has limited it, has conditioned it, has narrowed it down. Right? The more we acquire knowledge, the more there is the limitation of itself. No, you seem to be implying two things, Krishnaji. One is the sense of the ancient as the weight of the past, which gives it a sense of being very old, it because is. it has experienced for millions of years, and all the experience which has made it, which has conditioned it, which has narrowed which has it, down, it down, limited. But the ancient you are talking about, are you talking about? That which it has experienced through time. We'll go into that for the moment. First, let us see how ancient it is in the normal sense of that word, and how it has, in its own million years of experience, has limited itself. Therefore, there is the quality of its deterioration. And the modern world, living in the modern world, with all the noise, with all the sh- terrible shocks and the agonies of war and so on, has made it still more. Uh, limited more in conflict. Because in its very, the very limitation brings its own conflict. So there is a mind which because of the sense of these million years gives to it a density and weight. Yes, yes, you're quiet. Then there's a mind which is brittle. Which is? Brittle. Yes. No, are you which saying, is easily no, corroded. Are, no, no, let's go. No, the mind and the brain, let's for the moment, which are you talking I'm about? I'm talking of the brain. Brain, don't use the word no, mind. All right, I'll use the word brain. The brain has a certain weight to it de- that, and yes. a density to it. Yes, quite. quite. Which, a, um, a coarseness to it, a heaviness to it. Quite. A heaviness to it. Now, is that I, what you mean by the ancient? What? Is that what you mean by the ancient? Not quite. I just what want to go mean? into a little bit slowly. If we admit that the brain is, by its own evolution, has conditioned itself. Mm? Mm. And therefore, it has the inherent quality of its own destruction. Yes. And whether that quality can ever be stopped, in the, in the sense of its, its deterioration. Can the brain cells renew themselves in spite of its conditioning? You follow what I'm saying? Yes. In spite of its uh, agonies, failures, miseries, all the complex modern world in which we live, whether that brain can renew itself so as to achieve its original originality, not originality in the sense of individuality, but its originality in its origin. Would you say that a baby, the brain cells of the baby are original in that sense? No, no, of course you not. Would, of course not. So what is meant by an original 
originality of the brain cell. Let's go into a little bit. What is the word original? What does it mean? Unique, special. Uh, no, it has a quality of for the first time. Yes, the pristine quality. Yes, no, original means that untouched, untouched, uncontaminated by knowledge. Yes. Can it? That's the question. Can such a brain, which has been conditioned for a million or two million years, reach that or wipe away its conditioning and reach that quality of the pristine freshness of a brain? I don't know if it may be a wrong question altogether. The, but it is... I think... Uh, Scientifically, they would say that the brain cells are dying all the time. All the time. Therefore, the number of brain cells available... Or renewing it, and also uh, renewing itself. The one, the apparently certain cells die and certain cells are reborn. It's not dying all the time so the brain goes to pieces, dies. Mm-hmm. No, but uh, it, the very fact of aging is that the renewal does not keep in. Yes, that's it. Yes, but that's the whole point, isn't it, really? Can, is it possible for a brain that has been conditioned hmm, and therefore, as you put it, the in, built in quality of its own deterioration. Can that quality stop, end, disappear? Yes. That is, can the brain keep young? Young in the sense... Yes, brain keep Fresh, young. alive. Yes. Has a quality of its originality. Yes. How would you... Proceed from there. Proceed from there. I think we have to go into the question, what is consciousness? Right? Because that's part of our brain, part of our whole being, which is our consciousness. Right? Mm. What is consciousness? Not only the being conscious of things, outwardly and inwardly, but the whole content of consciousness. Because without the content there is no consciousness, as we know it. So, can the content which holds, which makes up this consciousness, can that content Um, end by itself, so that there is a totally different dimension to consciousness. You follow? Because the brain or the mind is this quality, has this quality of consciousness. Right? Yes. That is consciousness. The content is the consciousness. Yes, that is so. That is so. The content is pleasure, belief, excitement, sensation, reactions, faith, agony, pleasure, suffering, affection, and so on. It's the whole of that is consciousness. Right? Yes. And as long as the content, which is all this, exists, it must be, it must because of its conflict, its confusion within consciousness, must wear itself out. And that's why the brain becomes old. In a sense, old, 
aging dies. There is no freshness to it. No, sir. Is the content of consciousness identical with the brain cells? Yes. Of course. Then as the content of consciousness, because of its very nature, wears itself out... Con- through in, conflict. Through conflict. No, no, be careful. Yeah, I understand that. That very process is wearing out the brain cells. Is conflict. The disturbance, the shocks, the pressures, the... So the physical and the psychological are really the same thing, really, there. Uh, Yes, yes, and psychological, that's right. Physical reactions, psychological reactions. Because the brain is... Both reactions. The brain is physical. Mm. The content of consciousness is psychological. Which is also a process of the physical. Of course. Yes. Yes. So, it is psychological as well as the physical with all their reactions, bring about the thought of pain, the thought of agony, the thought of pleasure, the thought of achievement, ambition, and so on, so on. And belief, faith is all this. creates disturbance. Yes. And But the nature of the brain cells is to continually die. Yes. They carry on. The tradition carries on. It's inbuilt. That also is of inbuilt. Of course it's there. Therefore... And also its own protection, its own reaction, chemical reactions from what one hears, is its... The, 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 the cells with their reactions, they produce their own chemicals to protect itself. Yeah. But so is time inbuilt. Of course. From this product of time. Yeah. Time is inbuilt in the brain cells. Now, now, the question really is whether all this consciousness with its content end in the sense conflict totally end. But with conflict totally ending, will time end? Yes. After all, that is what mm. sannyasis, the monks, the real thoughtful people have inquired whether time has a stop. Right? Of course, they have all yeah. asked this question. Yeah. But you are talking of time now as the psychological process of conflict. Conflict, yes. Not time as duration or the watch or... <laughs> no, no, no. So what, what is it that we're trying to find out? What, what is it... investigate together. What is it that will bring this quality of birth into the mind? Quality of... Birth. Birth in the sense of... You no, know, let's be clear what you mean by birth. A new... A fresh a con- element entry into a it. Continual. I won't use the word uh, continual. No, I'll let me cut out continual. Yeah. But a being born and with the freshness of birth, huh? with the freshness of birth and purity uh, of birth. No, wait a minute, wait careful. Birth, you mean what? A baby is born. And his brain is already has the quality of the of his father, mother, and also the tradition. It's being gradually but bring all that out. But birth also has that quality of the new. Birth is it was not and it is. Are you are using birth in the sense do I uh, just let me clear the old being born, the ancient mind, the ancient brain, which is neither yours nor mine, is the universal brain, 
is reborn in a baby. Mm-hmm. It's reborn in a baby. And the baby, as it matures, the brain is the universe, the common brain. But what is reborn in a mind? That's what we want. Which is free. Yes. Is it the ancient reborn? No. You, let's be clear. Probably. Let first. Is it possible to be free of this conditioning of the brain, which has brought about its own uh, decay, and whether that consciousness can totally end all its conflict. Then out of that comes the new birth. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. As long as my as I am my brain, sorry my hay fever, as long as one's brain, uh, that is one's consciousness, is in conflict, there, there can be no new element entering into it's obvious. Would you ground that? Not verbally, but see the fact that as long as I'm fighting, 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 struggling to become yeah, something. I think I think one, one sees that. All right. Now, if one sees that, not merely verbally, but actually inwardly sees it, and then the question arises. Whether it's possible to end it. End what I mean, end suffering. End fear. You see, Krishnaji, the danger comes in that you can end it without renewal. Ah, please no, listen. Wait, all right, I... There is a possibility of ending all these things. And yet, and you know, and yet what? diminishing. Oh no! I we mean two different things by That's the word right. ending. Ending what? Ending that which is. Ending that which is. Which is my consciousness. All the thoughts that I have had. All the complexities that have been accumulated through time, the ending of that. So we'll have to be clear what you mean by ending. Either you end it by deliberate act of will, or deliberate. Uh, ideal purpose by a, a superior goal. You see, Krishnaji, when actually ending happens, which is the coming to a stop, the, the real standing still of the mind, it happens without, if you would, without any reason. Yes. It's not that the Sometimes, cause, sometimes. Yes. Let's go slowly. Sometimes it happens without reason. Yes. It is not due to any single Bullish. thing. <coughs> so, is it that you throw yourself to chance? No, no, no. Let's be clear first, probably. What, you, what do we mean by ending? Is the ending... Does the ending create its own opposite? No, because... Be careful, let me know. No, we sir. generally mean that. I end no. this in order to get that. No, no, I'm not talking of that ending. So, we, I mean by ending the total perception of that which is, hmm? total perception of my consciousness. The whole the complete perception of that consciousness, which is inside. That insight is not 
has no mem has not a motive of remembrance. It's a, it's a, in, um, immediate perception, and the ending of it is there is something beyond, which is not touched by thought. That's what I mean by ending. Is it? The, the million years which you call the ancient. No, that's part of the ancient brain. Of no. course, naturally. Is it that the total totality of that million years sees itself? Yeah, that's that is the real problem. <coughs> Let's make it a little more simple or a little more definite. We do say, don't we, see the point that our consciousness has been cultivated through time. Right? Yes, that's it. No, I, just me, don't. And any reaction to the ending of that is furthering another series of reactions. Yes. Which is, if I desire to end it, hmm, then that very desire creates another object to be gained. Yes. Now, so can, is there a possibility of perceiving without the movement of the future? You understand what I mean? The ending has no future. Only ending. But if the brain says, I cannot end that way because I need a future to survive. I don't know if I'm convinced. Yes, because they inbuilt in it. Yes, that's, that, that's is what is the I was, future. Of course. So is there an ending? Psychological, uh, the, the psychological devour. Conflictions, ending of all that, ending without the thought of the future, what will happen if I end? I don't know if I'm conveying anything. Because, look, I can give up something if you guarantee me something else. I'll give up suffering if you will guarantee me that I'll be happy with the ending of it. Or there is some extraordinary reward awaiting for me. Because my whole brain is constructed of, as part of that consciousness, reward and punishment. Punishment is the ending and the reward is the gain. Okay. Now, as long as these two elements exist in the brain, the future will, the continuation of the present will go on, modified and so on. Right? So can that, these two principles of reward and punishment end? I, when suffering ends, I'm not, the brain is not seeking a, a future existence in paradise. <laughs> no, but even if the, it is not seeking a future in paradise, suffering itself corrodes the brain. Huh? Suffering yes, itself yes. corrodes the brain. Yes. But you see, Papuji, it is very important to understand, I feel, that the brain is seeking constantly security. It must have security. That's why tradition, remembrance, the past has extraordinary significance. Right? It needs security. The baby needs security. Our brains need security. Security being food, clothes, and shelter. Uh, security is faith in God. Mm. 
faith in some ideal, faith in a future, better society. All the contribute, contributory causes which, de, which makes the brain say, I must have deep security. Otherwise, I can't function. Right? So, physically, there is no security. Right? Because it's going to die. It knows it's going to die. Psychologically, it has no security, actually. Am I going too far? <laughs> no, it's not that. With all this, be part of my consciousness. I still say that the, there's one central demand. What? There's one central demand. Which is to survive. No, sir. What is central demand? The central demand is to have a mind, to have a brain which gives the flavour of a new ah, no. existence. Wait, wait, who demands it? Just a minute. Do, who actually wants such a brain? Not the vast majority of people. No, but no. They say, please stay. No, but we are not are. talking about the vast. No. So I'm I am discussing with you, or X was discussing. Yeah. We are discussing. Yeah, let's with be you. clear. So it's basically that. I mean, we security. Many ways of getting security. What? There are many ways of getting security. I question, no, I question whether there is security in the sense we want security. So the brain will never understand. Oh, yes, sure. The brain will never understand. Oh, yes, yeah, because it built in its very... Um, no, but that's why I'm saying perception is important. Perception of what? Perception of action. Surely, what is first? Yes. Yeah. So move from there. Move from there slowly, percep- slowly. Perception of what is includes the creative things it has done, the stupid things it has done, what it considers worthwhile, what it considers not worthwhile. So the perception of all these and the ending of all this. No, no, no. Just me. Careful, people. Let's go slowly, if you don't mind. Perception of what is actually going on, right? Both physically, outwardly, and inwardly. What is going on around me, and psychologically, inwardly, what is it happening? That's what is. Yes. Hmm? Now, the question is, can what is be transformed? Right? Which is my consciousness. Which is part of the brain. But... And the emptying of that consciousness. That's the whole part. Uh-huh. Yeah. And emptying of that consciousness. You, are, you know, by you asking that question, is that possible? You understand? Is it possible to empty or to wipe away the whole of the past? The past is the time. The whole of my past, whole of the content of my consciousness is the past, which may project the future, but it still has its root in the past. Right? 
Yes. Now, is that possible to empty this thing? Really, this is a tremendous question, not just uh, ideological or intellectual question. It is: is it physical? Is it psychologically possible not to have? The burden of thousand yesterdays. The ending of that is the beginning of the new. Is the new? You used a word. You used a phrase just now. Is it possible not to have the burden of a thousand yesterdays? Yes. Is the problem in the burden? Or in the thousand yesterdays. Thousand yesterdays. He is the burden. You can't no, separate the two. No, no. Now, let me ask, how do you separate the two? Because the thousand yesterdays is a fact. Is a fact. Oh, Lumina, in that sense. The but I'm burden talking. is. When I have given a special content to many of these experiences which I have had, of course, of course. but the thousand yesterdays are thousand yesterday. No, just me. Would there be thousand yesterdays if there was no remembrance of those thousand years of struggle, whatever it is? Can I separate thousand years? I can separate by the calendar. Yes, you can, sir. You can separate thousand yesterdays from the burden of the thousand yesterdays. Now show me how. Uh, let's be clear first. What we mean when we say thousand yesterdays, by the by the encyclopedia or by a book or by a calendar, I can say Egypt was 4,000. No, no, but let back. us take yeah. one's own life. Yes, one's own life, which is 40, 50, yeah, 80, whatever, 90, it is, whatever it is. Which is uh, now. Or 20. You can separate the thousand yesterdays of one's own life from the pain, sorrow, burden, mm. all mm. that which is the burden of the thousand yesterdays. Yes. So you can cut away the what? The pain and the sorrow and the Can you? Why not? Cut away? What do you mean cut away? Perceive you just have said it. Oh, Perceive yes. I what see, but is. it's not a cutting away in the sense you see, cutting away implies two parts. You see that's what I you No, know, but if you I look know. you see, this is where the difficulty comes in. Can I cut away the, the fact of my 30 years, 50 years or 60 years? No, I can't do that. My body is 65 yeah, course, years old. I never old. said that. I can't commit suicide. Then, I'm t- I've lived 87 years. Am I 87 years or 88? What am I? 87. I've lived for 87 years. I can't, of course it exists. But I'm talking about the remembrances, the are uh, that, that, so that of course that. I'm talking about that. I'm saying thousand ye- yesterdays so exist. Two can be cut away. Well, I, the, you see, you can divide. <laughs> I can't divide. My body exists has not existed for thousand yesterdays. I mean thousand yesterdays in the sense. You're talking of the the ancient mind yes. of man. man. I can't cut it away. So I'm part, this whole brain and the, uh, all the material processes of the organism is part of then that. Then what do I do with the ancient mind? With That's the ancient what, mind, not you see, sir. I, one has understood what it what one has to do. With the su- with the superficial yesterdays, with the yeah, burden of the superficial with, yesterdays. Do you know what that means? Have I really wiped or ended thousand 
yesterdays, with all its superficiality, its pettiness, its narrowness, its brutality, its cruelty, its ambition, and so on, which are all superficial. Yes. Can I wipe all that away? Can that all end? I can say, I can cut away. But who is, who is the knife? And which is the knife? Which is the entity that's cutting it? It's part of that. No, but I'm not cutting away one thing. I'm cutting away the whole thing. The, you see, this is... If I were to discriminate and I'll say, I will cut away this and no, not no, this... No, no, that's too silly. But when, I'm cut, when I say I'm cutting away, I'm cutting away the whole, the whole burden. Now, wait a minute, Papuja, I understand. Don't, if I may say, I cutting away. No, I'm not worth I'm cut away the that. eye. So yes. it, let's be clear yes. on that. Let's cut, remove the eye. Yeah. You see, I do object, if you don't mind, cutting away doesn't mean... See, when you cut something, there are two parts. Yes, uh, what I'm trying to get at is that... See, this is where a lot of confusion takes place. I know, place. verbal confusion takes place. place. Because you, do, you cannot cut away... The 87 mm. years or the 65 uh, no. years, 66 oh, years. Of course. You are but not 87. I'm 66. <laughs> uh, but you can cut away. Oh, cut. That word is wrong. Don't use that word. You are That's using the word, the seeing of what is. The ending of what is. Ending of That's what is. totally different. Why do you, why do you draw a distinction between the ending of what is and cutting away. And ending, to me, means there is no continuation of something that has been. What is in cutting away? Why is Cutting that? away implies... You know, when I cut a piece of wood, there are two parts of the same thing. Well, I I'm think no, it's a semantic I, I, thing. I think we are just semantic. getting... But <coughs> I'm saying, I'm asking, is it first of all possible to completely end the whole content of my consciousness, of human consciousness, which has grown through millennia? And that content is this all this confusion, vulgarity, coarseness and pettiness and triviality of stupid life. But it is also the goodness. Oh yes, that's all true. Now, now wait a minute, I must be very goodness is something entirely different. Goodness has no opposite. Don't that's why. Goodness is not the outcome of that which is not good. The ending of that which is not good is goodness. That's it better. Now, is it possible to end all this conflict? If there is no ending to conflict, conflict will be modified. No, so that... <laughs> or there is an ending to conflict. Why do you say that? There is an ending to conflict. Is there or a forgetfulness of that which, which has been, which has caused conflict? Hmm? Or... Really ending. So do that you mean to say, sir, the very fact of ending of conflict is the birth of the new? Yes. You understand the implications of conflict, the depth of it. Hmm? 
not this superficiality that I'm no longer British or French or I don't belong to this country or that country or that religion or that religion. That's all very superficial things. I'm talking of the deep. You're talking of conflict as separation from another, mm-hmm. the sense of separateness. Separateness, that is the real thing. Isolation. which inevitably breeds conflict. Can, is that possible? I mean, what does it mean? So the brain is... There is no conflict. They may be... No, it means their problems may arise. You follow? But is that those problems are dealt with immediately ended. Problem means conflict. Why should problems arise? The word, um, the common usage of contradiction, is something, a problem is something thrown at you, which is a challenge. Well, problem means that. Something you have to face. Yeah. We resolve the problem intellectually or physically and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. Which is still creating further problems. Like the politicians, what they are doing. You conquer and the results of that conquering is some other factors, which brings to another series of problems. You keep this problem going all the time. I'm saying there is no problem. No, physically or psychologically, there's no problem. If, if, I, if, if I can't live at Brockwood for a few months, all right, I don't live at Brockwood. If, I, if nobody feels me, all right, I follow. There is no problem. If, you, if a new thing arises, either my brain is incapable of solving it, and therefore it becomes a problem, you mean to say, sir? That's the whole point of it. For the birth of the new. No, that's it. You're getting it. Must be. And therefore, the birth of the new is the most ancient. You follow? Can we go into that a little? Would you see? Would you say a little about it? After all, that is the ground beyond which there is no other ground. That's the origin beyond which there is no other origin. This is really a problem, not a problem, this is really a question whether the brain can ever be free from its own bondage. After all, ending something is not total freedom, right? I can end, uh, say for example, my hurts, if I have hurts, I can end it very simply. But the the images that I have created about myself, 
that, that those images get hurt. Yes. And the maker of the images is the problem. Right? Mm-hmm. So, I, it's more and more something else, which is to live a life without a single image. And therefore there is no hurt, no fear. And if there is no fear, there is no sense of safety, God, comfort, and all the rest of it. Now, would you say the most ancient of which very few, very, no, I won't even say that, which is the origin of all life, must be ancient of ancient, beyond all thought of old or new. That is the origin of all life. When the mind, which includes the brain, when that mind reaches that point of the of that ground which is totally original, new, uncontaminated. Is that possible? Meditation has been one of the means to reach it. Silence in the mind has been the ways that one hopes will help, will bring about that reach, that coming to it. See, we're all making efforts to come to it. That's what I'm saying. It, the, it requires no effort. And the very word effort means conflict. See, that which has no conflict, cannot be approached through conflict. Of course, obvious. In the sense, sir, does it really mean that there is no partial approach at all oh, in your teaching? Impossible. How, how can there be? If I approach it through my through various paths which the Hindus have discovered, say, Kama Yoga and all the rest of it, it's just partial. You can't approach it. Then what do you, you see? Your, say, your, your, your back that is there. the real problem. What do you do? You're an ordinary human being. No, you can't do anything. First of all, you can't do anything. You can only do physical activities. Psychologically, you cannot do anything. This is what you mean, physical activities? Creating garden, building houses, technological... But the blah, physical blah, blah. is move, going on. Huh? Physical is going on. It's going on. So what does one do? But if there is no psychological fears... Hmm? There would be no division of countries, and so on, so on. There would be no division, you follow? Yeah, but the fact is that there is psychological fear. That's just it. Therefore, you'll never get the mind, a brain which is lived in psychological isolation, can ne- which means conflict, can never possibly come to that ground. To that ground which is the origin of all life. Obviously not. How can my petty mind, worrying about my beastly little self, come so then, to sir, the, That is more futile, sir. Huh? That the whole of life is more futile. If, at the, if after doing everything, you haven't taken the first step, then where are you? What is the first step? Just me going to, what is the first step? I would say the first step is seeing whatever is. 
seeing what is, what is. by which bit. Uh, how do you see it? How do you approach it? And that depends the 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 totality of what is, or only you see the partial partial of what is. If you see the totality of what is finished. See, it doesn't. It doesn't just work like that. Of course not, because our minds, our thoughts are fragmented. Therefore, I approach the life or what is actually with my fragmented mind, fragmented brain, yes. which is broken up. And again, I'll say, with time, the fragmented gets less. Don't jump on me, but I it know, is I so. Know what you're going to say. It's simple. With time, the fragmented gets less, and it is possible to listen to you, for the mind to be still, not to make any movements, not to make any effort. Uh, but that's still not the first step. No, that's no. I, when you say, please, you use the word first step to observe or perceive what is. Right? Yeah. That's what you say. If I perceive it partially, then I, you know, that leads to further complications. Right? Partial perception creates partial problems. <laughs> right? Mm. Now, is it possible to see the, the whole complex of what is? To see the whole and not the fragment. That means, wait a minute, that means my, I have to see if I lead a life fragmented, a life of fragmentation. That is where I would begin. Because if, if I approach life, which is my consciousness, which is the way of thought, feeling, actions and all that, if I approach it fragmentarily, then I'm lost. That's what's happening in the world. They're totally lost. Those people who govern us, those people who tell us what's right, what's wrong, all the rest of it. Is it possible to look at life as a whole without fragmentation? Why doesn't the ancient why doesn't the ancient ancient mind see this? Can't, won't. How can you see? How Why? Can total, complete order. Hmm? But you just, you said that the ancient. Just a minute, that is the ancient. The, the original ground is the most ancient. Now that's there. No, no. What do you mean, no? Unless. It, it is there as an idea, which is what all people have maintained. God is there. They're just an idea, a concept, a, a projection of our own desire to be comfortable, to be happy, to be uh, all the rest of it. Can I live a life, can a human being live a life in which there is no fragmented, fragmented, fragment, fragmentary action?
if, you, if somebody says, where am I to begin? I say, begin there. Find out for yourself if you, have, if you lead a fragmentary life. You know what fragmentary life is? Saying one thing and doing another. But the whole fragment, fragmented way of living, which is isolation. And therefore I have no relationship with my wife or with other rest of humanity. So begin there. You know what that means? What tremendous inquiry you have to make to find out? What is inquiry? Observation. To observe very clearly without any bias, without any direction, without any more, what, how my life is fragmented. Just to observe it. Not say, I must, I'm fragmented, therefore I must be whole. The idea of becoming whole is another fragmentation. The implications of observing the way of fragmentation. Which means thought itself is a fragment. Right? And that is the cause of fragmentation. I am becoming something different from you. So the birth of the new is not possible unless you have this. Obviously.